what we have here are some buds already pushing out of this Willington mulberry. Let's hope that's a good sign. I mean, four buds at least. Thus, mosquitoes are horrendous this morning. It's like 10 a.m. and they are horrible. My avocado, my big one yesterday, it's dropped most of its avocados. Um, I think there's three left. One, somewhere is another one I just seen. And then you got the biggest one left. So it may not ripen any. There's number two there, two. So three of them left. Possible that they'll all fall off before they ripen. Although I hope that one there just does okay. This ginormous fig tree, which is not ginormous. I've seen them four or five times this size, but there was one probably 25 foot tall at a neighbor's house a long time ago when we were kids and it never produced figs, but this guy's full of them. You know, who knows how many hundreds are on this tree. And I know a lot of people prune it back and say, well, they'll only fruit on new wood, but it fruits, you know, quite a bit here. And if we wanted to root this, which I believe is a Celeste, not the greatest eating fig, I guess, but one of the most popular, Celeste and brown turkey. And brown turkey is supposed to be bigger, but not as good flavor-wise. My only ever bearing mulberry, I think it's, it budded out a little bit, and now it took a turn for the worse that we put in the ground. Looks like this maypop is getting ready to bloom, though. Look at there. first blooming may pop hopefully in the next few days or week or whatever it's going to be in what are we going to do with this super shady super root dense hard to dig in area in wetland zone one you know stuff comes up elderberries american uh, um, beauty berries and wild stuff biden's alva things i planted just haven't really done well and uh, one of my ideas would be to raise raise everything off the ground like a hugel culture but then again we probably can't dig enough of this dirt to make a hugel culture bed so it'd have to be like a raised wood chip bed kind of like the arborist age wood chip bed but we could just get trees if once we have enough material to do other stuff just pile them up you know kind of in a dense pile put leaves on them and stuff and make planting areas for things that really love shade and maybe need a little bit of cold protection. And one of the reasons why we haven't really planted or tried to plant like other things like the catley guavas and lemon guavas and um, stuff like that is because of this root density and nothing can really penetrate these roots short of getting something an excavator and digging and smoothing everything out and making the, the soil uh softer so raising a bed up in here or, or all around here so and, and you know being shade you know there's not a lot of things you can grow here like vegetable garden stuff and a lot of trees like full sun so the subtropical type stuff probably would do better here if they had um, softer soil to plant the roots down instead of trying to go through almost like concrete like dirt there's a praying mantis I'm not sure if we can get him in focus it's a little small one probably two inches or less We're here at the uh, dwarf black everbearing mulberry tree where I have the other one that has fruit pretty much the same. And if anybody's wondering if, you know, this rooted cutting or seedling or whatever, I don't know, remember the source of it, well, if it was supposed to be a cutting or a seedling, possibly black beauty, but I'm not sure what this was. I want to show you the differences so we are 
clipping it like a full size elderberry, I mean mulberry leaf. All right, I'm gonna pull one off of there. See it? This is like your average leaf from white mulberries or whatever. And here is a mature leaf of the dwarf river bearing. And this is a big one for it. Let me put the other one, unknown variety, underneath it. Most of them are this size. You can put three or four of these leaves in one leaf here. And that's the even, you know, the highest leaves. Some of them are even smaller. I'm gonna jump up there. Oh, I didn't do a very good Let's job. Let's try again. There is the one we picked in front of the camera. And here is the dwarf ever bearing leaf. Even though the fruits are pretty much the same size, the same flavor and everything, it is a genetically different plant or tree. And the, that, the one with the big leaf has only produced every other year for us and it blooms every year. Uh, maybe with some severe pruning and fertilizing, maybe it would be different. I'm not sure. But if this guy produced every year for us and we're gonna prune it and kind of try to make the, the limbs droop down a little bit more to make it easier to uh, pick. But if this guy did every year, fruited every year for us the same as this one, it would double our supply of really good quality mulberries each year. And we do have other mulberry trees we're rooting and stuff, as you probably know. Um, the Chiang Mai 60, um, Himalayan, 6th Street. We're trying to uh, do Wellington, Kakuso. We tried Illinois Everbearing, but uh, it looks like none of the cuttings took. I mean, we might be surprised with something coming out of the ground in a few months. Just, you know, maybe a bud or something underground actually took, but... The top growth looks pretty much dead on all of them. And I don't know why, because I, and that was within a couple weeks of rooting the Chiang Mai, you know, trying it where, <clears throat> yeah, where you're at. The only difference is the Chiang Mai had a lot of green growth and maybe that's, that's the key to the early, the late spring to early summer rooting versus like older growth. Maybe it's harder to root over older growth uh, in the summer. Just like in this other little wetlands area, we have some taro. And I put things all over the place. I don't, didn't know exactly where I put this. I might have put two or three here and some other stuff around here. This, is, this area is like the wettest area in my yard. This is not wetlands on one. This is far in the back. Where like, you know, the, there's a ditch that goes all the way to the old, like, railroad tracks, I guess. And all of these native ferns, you know, thousands of them and probably millions back there behind our property. There's a royal fern, which is kind of split between our two properties. Right there with everything else. And there's some of it and there's some there, more mature. Uh, a little bit of red aurora which these are all genetically the same just spread through root suckers we had more here but i've tried to propagate them over time in different areas and sometimes they would last two or three years but they die and produce very few actual berries so got another taro or malanga or something here and there's another one over there so they're coming up out here some of the stuff we plant here seems to be coming up and doing okay. Give everybody a little piece of advice if they start just planting seeds here, there, and everywhere or cuttings here, there, and everywhere. And plants just, you know, and they do so many that they forget about them. You're usually not going to have successes doing that. Just plain and simple things, you know, don't get enough water, you know, or rain, drought, whatever. And if they don't get well established, you know, before a drought or, you know, the summertime hits and we don't get, you know, almost daily misting, sprinkles, light rains. And a lot of things that they either do not come up because they don't get enough and they dry out or rot. 
or they come up or start to root like that uh i said illinois everbearing mulberry but that was actually a Chiang Mai mulberry that was in the ground um something like that started budding out it's just a little bit too far from the water hose so i should have probably did more with you know bringing water buckets to it and uh now paying the price because it's not just a rooted tree which has enough stress of being transplanted in an area where it's not establishing its root system before the droughts but imagine one without a root at all trying to root it trying to keep it alive in the same scenario lands plants you know if you can put them in heavy shade and wet areas that are wet most of the time like the taro probably do okay you know without having to worry about maintaining them but a lot of other plants you might have higher ground where you want to plant some uh, roselle or other hibiscus or mallows or something else forget where they're put forget to water them a few days in the 90 90 degrees or whatever and if the ground isn't kept moist and you know mulched well where it's at boom them things can die in a day or two and not come back. So an arm cherry that's getting bigger. And this was just um, from throwing these guys the, the, the fruits down here for box turtles and stuff to eat. When I used to have box turtles in here. And some of them just rooted. Looks like we got soybeans. Sweet potato there produced a vine and then it rotted. And I put the vine kind of back in the ground to see if it'll self root. But we have another Suriname cherry here that's produced uh, you know, two, two uh, trunks or whatever. Sweet potato that's doing a little bit better. And we got random sweet potatoes in here. And, and a lot of times they do rot or they'll produce a slip and then rot after they produce a slip and see if, and look like they're going to be okay. I see sweet potatoes right there. More soybeans. Some ginger here coming up. Sweet potatoes there. And there's just soybeans up and down all throughout here with all the weeds. I thought I had more than two Suriname cherries, but it could be could be a third one hiding in all these weeds here. Have to give it a thorough examination, but I don't really see it just by looking, glancing. Um, that right there, I believe, is a goo that I put in the ground and it looks like it's got some growth coming out the top of it so that'd be nice if we got a gooey I forgot about sticking it in there probably put one in there maybe two and I put autumn olives in different areas put an autumn olive or two in here but I don't see any sign of it oh actually right there it is I mean this is an example where it's a little bit raised on the ground high sandy area because there's a big camphor root right there and if it doesn't get like water and rain every day which i'm not watering it every day it could just die and not root that's the chance we took when we put you know cuttings all over the place i need to plant natalie's mayor lemon i need to plant her little dwarf gardenia i need we need to all do our youngest son's fruit tree you know at two years of age we plant a fruit tree with them but the mosquitoes are so bad we may not be able to all come together you know we were hoping to make a nice little a video with all the whole family doing that but if when natalie gets out mosquitoes she hollers and screams and i gotta go in i gotta go in i'm eating up getting eat up which is you know making a video is not just moving you have to actually you know sit or stand and dig and get all the kids and all to come together to do something like that so i hope that we can do something but it might just me be me and the youngest kid rushing out here putting some mosquito spray on them and getting him to uh help uh, pot the plant you know which is this one right here As I say potted, I mean transplant it to the ground or whatever from the pot. But I'm getting it with mosquitoes as I'm talking, so I'm not really thinking that. 
Well, right, guys, I guess that's it for this video. Take care.